Liz Truss is the shortest serving Prime Minister to form a government in British history, whose time in office will last only seven weeks. But which Prime Minister previously held this record? George Canning lasted more than twice as long as Truss, with a total of 119 days in office, from the 12th of April to the 18th of August 1827. It wasn't the British economy's demise that brought Canning's premiership to an end, but well, Canning's demise instead. In January of that year, Canning attended a funeral on a freezing night, allegedly without wearing a jacket, and fell seriously ill. His health deteriorated further during his time in office and he died of tuberculosis. George Canning arguably had an even more tumultuous time in government than Truss, with divisions in his own party that make today's Tory squabbles look like a mere scrap on the playground. Just like Truss, he served as Foreign Secretary and had such an appalling dispute with the War Secretary, Lord Castlereagh, that they decided to have a duel on Putney Heath. Canning, who had never even held a gun before, was shot and wounded in the leg and lost. British politics these days sounds pretty dull in comparison. But what about Prime Ministers who failed to even form a proper government? Liz is beaten by the Earl of Bath, William Pulteney, who was PM for just two days between the 10th and the 12th of February 1746. Pulteney's appointment was even more undemocratic than Liz's, as he was directly appointed by King George II. The previous Prime Minister, Henry Pelham, had organised a mass resignation in protest against the King, who had been trying to influence the government in his favour. Basically, George wanted to put one of his mates in the cabinet, which Pelham had recently got rid of. This meant it was left to the King to find someone to replace Pelham. I wonder if Charles would enjoy the luxury of choosing his own PM. See you again. Great pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, no. Clearly, George chose poorly. The Earl of Bath could not gather enough support from the party, and Pulteney's government collapsed due to his unpopularity before he had even finished appointing his own cabinet. The king was forced to reappoint Pelham on the condition that he ceased his meddling in government affairs. One contemporary newspaper described Pulteney's two day rule as the most wise and honest of all administrations, and left as much money in the treasury as he found in it. If only the same could be said of Liz Truss's legacy. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more history in bits.